everyone. Very excited to be here today. As Stan said, my, my name is Shaq. I'm originally from Hong Kong, but I've been living in Dublin for 16 years now. So I hope you understand some of my Asian mixed Dublin accent. Um, I'm a product designer at Intercom. Uh, if you're not familiar with Intercom, we are a messaging platform for companies to connect with their customers in a more personal way at scale. As an end user, you will be able to use the Intercom Messenger to talk to the people behind the business directly. And on the other side, we also have products for companies to manage their the communications. So as Simon said, I joined Intercom about four years ago. And at that time, the product was relatively basic and simple. But as the company grows and the product grows, we have started to add more and more features based on new use cases that we have discovered. And as you may know, adding new features also means adding complexity, both in terms of how people may interact with the product and for us to design for the product over time. Increasingly, there will be more design considerations that we need to take into account as we want to make a product change. But I think Intercom has managed the complexity pretty well. We have been able to deliver new products that are quite feature rich, but not necessarily complicated to use. And I think one of the key for managing complexity in Intercom is the way we encourage design team to think about system when they are designing products. It means they always try to take a step back from the design details and think about how the product will work at a system level. It means to think about what are the system objects in the product, how they connect it, and how does it fit into the wider system. I'll demonstrate some of this concept later on, but I'll be completely honest with you. I didn't quite understand it in the first place. You know, as digital designers, we're equipped with tools like Sketch or Photoshop, or prototyping tools like Framer, Envision, that we can use to craft beautiful interfaces very easily. So why do we need to suddenly step away from all these tools and think about something really quite abstract? And it wasn't totally clear to me until I worked on a project where it wasn't so successful because we didn't have a system in the first place. And having learned from that experience, we tried to apply um, design system at the start of the project, and it turns out to be more successful. And this is what I want to talk about today. I want to go through the two examples of designing products at Intercom, where one we did not have a system and where one we did. And through these two examples, I hope I can demonstrate the basic concepts of system thinking, why is it important, and how it can be applied to product design. So let's dive into the first project. This was the Intercom Messenger in 2015. At that time, I was working on a team to take a complete redesign of the messenger. So what we did was to gather customer feedback, went to um, observe how people use the product, measure product usage, and then we have come up with a list of problems that we want to address as part of this redesign. For example, this was the big announcement message type that companies can use to share important information with their customers. And what we found was that the design of this message type was too intrusive, and it was not very elegant in some other design details. So perhaps we were a little bit too eager to solve these problems. We went straight ahead into design exploration at the interface level. We were thinking, what if this message could be delivered using a more subtle notification type? And then when people open it, they will open the, uh, the message content will be displayed in a more standard light box format, so that it doesn't completely take over the screen. However, as we get further into the design details of trying to figure out how this interaction will work, we were struggling because we, couldn't, we didn't have a good understanding of how it would work in the wider context. We were thinking, what happened if someone replied to this message? We continued the conversation at the very bottom of this message, 
or should it somehow return to the messenger? Or should it do a little, little bit of both where it starts from the message and then it continues in the messenger? Also, how would this interaction work for other message type that we, we support? And I kind of feel like we're st stuck at trying to figure out this interaction and we couldn't make a good design decision at that time. And then Paul, who is our head of product, he, he reminded us to take a step back from all these details and think about how the product would work at a system level. He showed us some examples of how we can break the messenger down into component parts and have a higher level system that describes how those parts work together. And by following this system, it helped us to inform some of the further design decisions that we had to make. And that was a very important lesson for me of what happened if we start by designing at the interface level without having a system. And if we had designed the system in the first place, it would have saved us days of weeks of work. So this lesson kind of motivated me to learn more about system design and how can I get better at it. And this book by Donald Meadows gave me the most inspirations. She described a system as an interconnected set of elements that is inher coherently organized in a way that achieves something. To me, this is still pretty abstract, but to break that down a little bit, she gave us a framework to think about system. First, you should think about what are the core elements in the system, and then you can think about what are the interconnections in the system, as in how are the elements get connected, what are their relationships, and what are their inputs and outputs. And then lastly, you can think about what is the overall purpose of the system? What does it try to achieve? As she said, if you apply this way of thinking to see the world, a lot of things can be described as systems. Here are just some examples you gave. A football team is a system of, with elements such as the players, um, the field, the ball, the coach. The interconnections are the communication between the team members and the rules of the game. And the overall purpose of a team is to win games. A forest is a system of trees and animals. A city is a system of buildings and people. I think we are getting somewhere, but what does this actually mean for designing digital products? Having learned some of these basic concepts, I try to apply it into the next project, which is called Educate. Educate is a self-serve support product that we have designed and built from scratch. The goal of this product is to help customers to find answers themselves. Again, at the start of the project, we did a lot of research to try to gather as much insights as possible. And then we had many brainstorm sessions to try to come up with product ideas that can address the problems that we have identified from research. And after that point, having learned from the previous project, I knew it was going to be a mistake if I start designing at the interface level again as a next step. Instead, what I needed to do was to take all this, find a way to take all these product ideas and translate them into a more actionable plan. And this is where I tried to take a step back and think about how the product would work at a system level. By following the framework that was suggested by the book, I started to think about what are the core elements in this product and how they connected. So in our case, article is a is the core element in the system. An article is help content that is created by companies to provide answers to common questions. In terms of its attribute, it has an author, content, and ways for people to give feedback on the article. Since we have this art, um, element in place, then we can think about what are the other elements in the system and how they connect it. And one of the things to think about here is what are the inputs and outputs of an article? And to me, that really translates to how an article get created, 
and how do they get delivered to people? So through this line of thinking, we've identified we need a content management system for companies to create and manage articles. And in terms of its output, we need to, it means we need to make the articles available to search and browse from our help center or through the messenger so that people can find answers themselves. So, so far, this is still a relatively basic system. But then we have talked about other product ideas, such as we want customer support team to be able to use articles within support conversations so that they can use them to answer people's questions faster. So how, what does this mean in the system? How could we model that? And what, does, what element does it involve? And it means we need to make the articles searchable from the inbox and that the articles are available to receive by the end users to a conversation. And without going through all the details, this is the system that we've ended up with. It helps to kind of encapsulate most of the product ideas that we have um, came up with from the whiteboard. But as you can see, what started out as a simple problem could have a complex system behind it. So you may wonder, why do we need to put all this effort into designing something that's quite abstract? It turns out it was very helpful for the rest of the project in multiple ways. First, it helped us to create a shared vision of, it helped us to create a shared vision for the whole team to get into the same page of what we are trying to achieve. It helps the engineers to start planning work early on and helps to ensure that the system model is carried through all the way from design to implementation. It also allowed us to have feedback and collaboration early on. So the system that I showed there was a collaborative effort between me and the product manager in the team. We were able to use this to describe how the product would work without diving into any level of design details. And once we have agreed on the higher level direction, then we can then step into the further design um, fidelity. And from a project point of view, it also helped us to break a big product into multiple manageable parts that we can then prioritize and focus on designing one by one instead of us trying to design for the whole product at once. And I think most importantly, it helped us to achieve product consistency by being able to identify system elements in the product that should have the same visual representation in multiple contexts. For example, knowing that an article is a, is a core element in the system, it should look the same no matter if it is presented in the help center or when customer support team preview the article before they send or when end users receive the articles through the messenger. So I hope at this point you can see the value of system thinking and have some ideas of how it can be applied to product design. But what does this Uh, what does this mean to you? How can you apply it in your next project? And I think no matter if you are designing a new product or already have an existing product, you can still apply the same framework to try to map out the product system. Start by thinking about what are the core elements in the system and what are their relationships. And once you and your team has mapped out the product system, then you can try to identify opportunities to simplify the system. Here are just some prompts to help you to think about. Can the, can the system achieve the same goal with small amount of elements? As in, are there other elements in the system that serve little or no purpose that you can get rid of? You know, instead of trying to invent a new element every time you create a new product, are there existing elements in the system that serve similar purpose that you can try to reuse or combine them in some way? And can the whole system be organized using a better structure 
as in, are there way, better ways to group elements in the system? Can you change the relationship between elements? Uh, I hope by answering these questions, you'll be able to identify opportunities for product changes that will result in much greater impact than if you are just trying to redesign the interface layer alone. So to sum up, today I've gone through some basic concepts of system thinking. I've demonstrated why system thinking is important to two projects that I've gone through, and share some tips on how you can apply it in your next project. So I hope you find it useful. Thank you.